On the left is a table labeled Virtual Matched Pairs. In the center is a table that shows average cost and quantity data for a Q4 house. This is what you will see in a cost manual, usually in a horizontal layout, but I have it vertical for a reason you will see in a minute. The data is a few years old, but it works for this example. On the right is a table that shows the interaction of the variables used in the age life method of depreciation. Age life depreciation is used in the 1004. Notice that when effective age is zero, remaining economic life is equal to economic life. Economic life is a specification in the cost manual. When you enter an effective age, you calculate remaining economic life and depreciation. If economic life is 60 and effective age is 15, there is 25% depreciation. If effective age is 60, depreciation is 100%, so the building adds nothing to land value. At zero effective age, the improvements contribute 100% of their cost to the value of the land. Back to the idea of virtual matched pairs. The virtual match pair process is a simulation of paired sales. The logic is the same. Here is an example of two houses that differ only in size. Paired sales logic is to find two houses in the MLS data from the current market that differ only in the characteristic that is to be adjusted. Here we have two houses that differ in price by $21,600 and 400 square feet in size. Do the math and we see a GLA adjustment of $54. The virtual match pair process uses the same logic, but rather than using sale prices of two equal properties that differ only in size, we are using cost data for two houses that differ only in size. If we are able to extract a depreciation from the market and apply that to the cost, we can develop a credible, market-based GLA adjustment. What we are trying to do is find the amount of money that the market assigns to a difference in GLA. Yes, there is an assumption involved, but this assumption eliminates other assumptions that come with MLS data. When we do a scatter plot of MLS data, we need to remember that the sample includes houses with different condition, more than one quality level, unknown variation in site value and a random selection of beneficial or adverse location and view characteristics. This is why we see the dispersion in a typical scatter plot. The virtual match pair process eliminates all of these variables and drills down to a single number, the effect on total cost of one square foot of GLA. Let's say we are appraising a house with 2600 square feet of GLA and we need the GLA adjustment. Notice I have bracketed GLA at 2,800 and 2,400 square feet. Let's go to the cost table and find the square foot cost at these quantities. Entering 97.28 in the table, we see the average cost extended to total cost of GLA. Next, entering 99.87, we see total cost of GLA for the smaller house. There is a difference in cost of $32,696 and a difference in size of 400 square feet. Dividing, we get $82 per square foot. In financial accounting, this $82 number is called marginal cost. It is the change in total cost that is a direct result of a change in the unit of production, in this case, GLA. Let's say we can extract depreciation from the market at 33%. In the age life method of depreciation assumed in the 1004, this corresponds to an effective age of 20 years. 33% depreciation is another way of saying that the market is paying 67 cents on the dollar for GLA. In this case, 67% of the cost of 2,800 square feet of GLA is $181,589. The 2,400 square foot house has GLA worth $159,792. These are called depreciated cost because they are what is left of cost new after depreciation. When we subtract, we find that the market is paying $21,797 for 400 square feet of GLA. 
dividing the change in depreciated cost by the change in quantity, we find that the GLA adjustment is $54. How accurate is this? If you are calculating depreciation and cost with the same cost data, it should be pretty close. It is not proof of an adjustment, but it is a strong inference, especially considering that it is immune from any sampling problems. This process may be tedious, but it does a good job of showing how virtual match pairs uses the same logic as paired sales. Now let's assume a larger house with 3,800 square feet of GLA. The upper bracket becomes 4,000 square feet at 9,277. The lower bracket becomes 3,600 square feet at 9,404. Notice we have the same GLA adjustment. This is hinting that marginal cost is the same within the Q4 cost profile at any quantity. To know that marginal cost is equal throughout the cost table, we can use regression. To do that, we need to plot total cost by size, just like we did with MLS data for price and size. Here is a scatter plot from MLS showing the correlation between size and price. Notice the trend line with the R-squared value of 0.5258. R-squared is an indication of the strength of the correlation between size and price. In this case, size accounts for 53% of sale price. To apply the same regression technique to cost, the first thing we need to do is extend the average cost to total cost. Watch as I do that and the plot will appear on the graph. Here we see the scatter plot with the trend line. Notice how well the trend line fits compared to the usual scatter plot we see when we plot price versus size. In the cost manual we have no sample error and no other variables that may be affecting price. Just a pure cause and effect relationship between cost and size. Take a look at the R-square value. 99.98% of the variation in cost is explained by the change in quantity. Back to the typical scatter plot of MLS data. There is a trend line, but the overall pattern is dispersed by other variables, probably things we cannot easily search for in MLS, such as condition, quality, and site value. To get the GLA adjustment out of the cost manual, we only need one more calculation. Simply multiply the marginal cost of $82 by the percentage of cost being paid in the market. In this case, it works out to $54 for the GLA adjustment.